Hey everybody, today we're doing some counting. We're going to talk about factorials, permutations, and combinations. It all comes down to the fundamental counting principle, which says, if one event can occur in m ways, and the second event can occur in n ways, then the two events in sequence can occur in a total of m times n ways. An important point here is that the occurrence, the outcome for the first event does not affect the number of outcomes possible for the second event. Here's an example. A menu includes six salads and eight soups. How many soup and salad combinations are possible? The idea is, first we pick a salad, there's six possibilities there, and then for each of those six choices, there's eight possible soups. So we end up with six groups of eight, six times eight, or 48 total possible combinations. This idea can be extended to longer strings of events, like so. If a menu includes six salads, eight soups, 15 entrees, and three desserts, then there are six times eight times 15 times three meals possible, 2,160. Often we need to count how many ways n objects or people or whatever can be arranged, like in this example. How many different ways can a group of four people stand in line? In other words, how many different ways can we order those four people? So we're going to use the fundamental counting principle. There's four different choices for the first person in line, three for the second, two for the third, and one for the fourth. So overall, we have four times three times two times one, or 24 ways that the four people can be arranged in the line. This calculation comes up uh, very often, so often that we give it its own name, four factorial. More generally, n factorial, n with an exclamation point, is the product of the first n integers, 1 times 2 times 3, all the way up to n. So for example, 3 factorial is 1 times 2 times 3, 5 factorial, 1 times 2 times 3 times 4 times 5, and 10 factorial is the product of the numbers between 1 and 10. And that's already more than 3 million. n factorial grows fast. Its growth is faster than exponential. Let's do a slightly more involved example. 12 horses enter a race. How many ways can they win, place, and show? In other words, well, how many different possible combinations are there for the first three positions in the race? So we use the fundamental counting principle again. 12 possible winners, 11 possible second place finishers, and then 10 possible third place finishers. So overall, we have 12 times 11 times 10, or 1320, possible ways that the first three positions can be filled. More generally, suppose we have n items, or horses, or people, or whatever, and we want to count the number of arrangements for, the for, for just k of those. So there's n choices for the first, then n minus 1 for the second, and so on. We multiply those numbers using the fundamental counting principle until we have k terms total. The last thing we're multiplying is going to be n minus k plus 1. We give this a name. It's n p k, n permute k, and uh, it's just the math that we had on the previous slide. There's a slightly more compact way to write it, though, like this, n factorial over n minus k factorial. So the first n minus k terms in the numerator are going to cancel with the denominator, and we'll just get the product that I have at the top of the slide. Here's an example using NPK. How many ways can a collector arrange eight figurines on a shelf if they own 53 figurines total? So basically, how many ways can we order eight objects out of 53 total? This is 53 permute eight. 53 factorial over 45 factorial. This is greater than 35 trillion, a huge number of possible orderings. It's essential to remember that n permute k counts the number of ways that things can be put in order. Sometimes, though, we aren't so concerned about order, and we're just concerned with how many different ways can we select groups of k objects. Like in this example, three of the 12 horses in a race are randomly selected for drug testing. How many ways can the horses be chosen? So here, order does not matter. Choosing horses a, b, and c is exactly the same as choosing horses C, B, and A. We have notation for this too. NCK, which we re usually read, and choose K, 
means the number of ways that k things can be chosen from a total of n things, where order doesn't matter. So in this case, we're looking for 12 choose 3. All right, how do we actually compute it? We're going to need a little bit of algebra. And the way I'm going to approach that algebra is by looking at npk again. And instead of just viewing it as ordering those k objects directly from a total of n, now I'm going to view it as a two-step process. First, I'm going to pick which three I want. So in this case, that would be 12 choose 3. And then I'm going to count the number of ways I can arrange those that I chose. So in this case, it'll be 3 factorial. So here's the algebra I get. 12 permute 3 is 3 factorial times 12 choose 3. And then I'm just going to solve that for 12 choose 3. So in this case, 12 choose 3 is 12 permute 3 over 3 factorial. I get 220. That's how many ways I can choose 3 horses out of the 12 to be randomly tested for drugs. Let's generalize that a little bit. n c k n choose k is going to be n p k over k factorial. So I get n factorial over n minus k factorial um, times k factorial, all of that in the denominator. Now, when we're doing problems with permutations and combinations, the fundamental question you have to ask is, does order matter? If order matters, you're in a permutation problem. If it doesn't matter, you're in a combinations problem. Let's have a few examples. How many ways can a committee of four people be formed from a class of 20 students? Does order matter here? No, it doesn't matter what order we choose the students. They're all going on to a committee. So we need to do 20 choose 4, 20 factorial over 16 factorial times 4 factorial, 4,845. Example 8. How many ways can a committee of four people be formed from a class of 20 students if the committee has to include a president, vice president, secretary, and treasurer? So now the orderings are distinct. If person A is president, that's different than if person A is vice president. This is 20 permute 4. Now we get 20 times 19 times 18 times 17, 116,280. By the way, Notice that 20 permute 4 was larger than 20 choose 4. That'll always be the case. There's more possible orderings than choices. One last example. How many ways can a committee of four people be formed from a class of 20 students if one person has to be designated, the designated president? This is a bit of a hybrid problem. So we're going to need to do two steps on it. There's different ways that we could do this. Here's how I'm going to view it. First, we pick the president. There's 20 different ways we can do that. Then choose the remaining three members of the committee. Order doesn't matter there, so it's going to be um, a choices problem. Overall, it's going to be 20 times 19 choose 3. 19 choose 3 because we've already selected the president. There's only 19 students left. Doing the arithmetic here. 20 times 19 factorial over 16 factorial times 3 factorial, we get 19,380 total possibilities.